everyone for coming. I'm actually really excited about this project and I have a little confession to make. Um, so the official title that you'll see out there and in your track and in the agenda is using machine learning to combat my son's asthma. But ever since the call for proposals, I have actually released this app uh, as a cloud app and is open for uh, public use for free. So, so uh, yeah, this, this actually started out as a way for me to uh, track my son's asthma. And that was the singular purpose at the time. I just wanted to track it because my wife and I, we, he, he, it seemed like he would randomly use his inhaler. So he would go two weeks without ever needing an inhaler. And then boom, he would use it every hour on some random day. So we really just wanted to track his inhaler and see what contributed to it. And then it quickly evolved into trying to predict if he would need his inhaler on any given day. And then if it was over a certain threshold, the prediction threshold, then it would email his school nurse and so she could take preemptive action because he's in the school nurse's office all the time. So the data that we use to uh, predict his inhaler usage is uh, location is one of them. And then weather data, so uh, temperature, air pressure, precipitation, humidity, et cetera. And we use allergen data, all types of allergens. So I don't know about you people who are from Austin or anywhere else that you're from, but in Nashville, we have a huge pollen problem. So intuitively, it made sense that, yes, we know that um, to a certain extent, pollen and weather data and pollutant data plays a part in his inhaler usage. So uh, then we got some uh, pollutant data that I get from, I think, uh, airnow.gov. So I actually have to scrape that data. It is not available on a simple API, so it's very annoying. Uh, but welcome to open source. So, so I get some ozone measures and then some particulate measures. And for the allergen data, you know, that's um, available at pollen.com. And I get, oh, you know, all kinds of pollen data, uh, different types of grasses, maple, elm. And we really try to see if we can use any of these data points to uh, see if w which ones have um, an impact on his in inhaler usage. So this is the revolutionary technology, the Raspberry Pi, with two physical buttons on it. Yes, physical buttons. This, uh, no, I'm just kidding, it's not revolutionary at all. This was the very first prototype um, that I used to track his inhaler usage. And so, as you can see, there are two buttons on the right. Uh, you can ignore the white button. That's the button I use when I lose my cell phone. Um, but I only had one breadboard, so I put it on the same one. Uh, so, I use the red button, he touches it, or he pushes it every time he uses his breathing treatment, which is different than an inhaler. Um, the blue button is when he uses the inhaler. So he knows that every time when we had this prototype, every time he used his inhaler, he would know he would go into the living room and push the blue button. And breathing treatment, the same thing. He would push the red button. And then on the, also on the Raspberry Pi, we put the, uh, the data scripts on there, the uh, ETL stuff, so pollen.com. All of those scraping scripts that we used every, every morning to get that data, we've just hosted it on the uh, Raspberry Pi. And so after a few more months, um, I released the beta version, and it's available at achu.us. And so now we have a sort of a very basic uh, dashboard. As you can see on the left, uh, it has his you know, uh, forecast, inhaler forecast. So on this particular day, there was a 79.7% chance that he will need his inhaler. So that's a very good number, because we can, I can act on that number. I can send an email or an alert to his school nurse and say, hey, just be on the lookout uh, for Brantley. Uh, he might be in your office, um, but preferably, can you go get him and maybe administer his breathing treatment early so we can get out in front of that asthmatic episode? And then on the right, uh, we just have these triggers. So let me, let me show you. So uh, Elm is the left bar. So that's a, a, a big trigger uh, for Brantley, uh, supposedly. And then let me actually just show you the app. So here is a working version of the app. And if you hover over these bars, it shows you how much of an impact it has on Brantley's inhaler usage. So we can see that mostly it's allergens and then and a close second it is pollutant data, which makes sense, right? And so elm and certain types of grasses probably play the most part in his inhaler usage. And then at the bottom, we, I really just wanted a heat map. So I put a heat map on there that shows the location where he uses his inhaler. And so this dot right here is our house in Nashville, Tennessee. And then this dot is his grandparents' house because he stays there a lot. 
And I'll talk more about how I want to track, like geographically, how I want to track his inhaler usage because right now it's a very primitive technique. I just, if he uses his inhaler, I get out my phone. If he's at school and I know he, he uses his inhaler, I'll get out my phone and just touch the button. Um, I'll show you the button. It's, I mean, your basic bootstrap button. But so, <laughs> so yeah. So if you if you press this, it'll record his inhaler usage. I won't press it now. I don't want to bias the data. So yeah. Um, that's the dashboard, very simple. Um, like I stated, this app serves a very narrow purpose. It is to predict if my son will need his inhaler on any given day. And I'll, I'll talk more in the moving forward section, um, how I want to branch this app out and do this for, uh, did you have a question? Ah, negative impact. Uh, wind bearing. I don't even know what wind bearing means. And then we have wind speed. And surprisingly, I thought temperature high would play a, a big role, but it doesn't play that much of a role at all. So it's mostly allergen data and then pollutant data. So for the data modeling, this is not a technical talk. This is a very high level talk. Uh, if you want to talk technical details, I'll put the GitHub link at the end of the um, slide and you can come talk to me. I'm, I could talk for hours about you know, what, what, what it's built on, where it's hosted and whatnot. Uh, but this is a very high level uh, talk. So we're getting the data, like I said, the weather data comes from Dark Sky API. They have a very nice API. Uh, the pollen data is coming from pollen.com and the uh, allergen data is coming from airnow.gov, or sorry, the pollutant data is coming from airnow.gov. And yes, I have to web scrape that data and it's very painful. And so for the modeling, I started out with a basic just logistic regression, uh, so yes or no, uh, if he needs his inhaler or not. And I'm also experimenting with some other classifiers. I'm using uh, scikit-learn for that. So the modeling is still under a uh, very active and heavy development. And so what I used for this was Flask RESTful. So I made this available as a RESTful API, so you can just get the data you need. You don't actually have to use the dashboard if you don't want to, if you wanted to uh, plug it into another one of your apps or whatnot. Um, the data pipeline, all the ETL is done in Python, all of the scripting. The modeling is done in scikit-learn for now. Uh, I'll talk more in the moving forward section about how I want to extend this so we can make this uh, language agnostic as it refers to the, to the modeling, so using Julia models or R models. And the front end is just built with jQuery, Bootstrap, D3, and Leaflet. So moving forward, uh, this is still under very active development. It's not even a year old. I started on this just a few months ago, last year at some point. Uh, so I'm, I'm planning to release a lot of new features um, weekly. And so additional data that I want to try out is heart rate, because I know that will play a huge factor. Um, so probably do that with some type of wearable device, a smartwatch or something. Uh, also maybe step count, that might have some impact. And then he's really allergic to cats and allergic to some dogs. So I'm not sure how I would implement this, but definitely want to see if I can get data on his exposure to animals during the day, at night, whatever. And like I said, I want to make this available in R, Julia, uh, in other languages, that way you open it up to the community. And then one of the most important things that I want to try moving forward is to see if this can be done with allergies as well. And now there's inherent differences between allergies and asthma. With allergy medicine, he takes allergy medicine also. That's where the name came from. Uh, he takes allergy medicine also. Um, but for this medicine, he has to really take this for like a week or two before it actually starts working. So there are some difficulties in trying to predict if he'll need his allergy medicine or Benadryl. But I want to definitely ex experiment with that and try that out to see if we can do the same thing with allergies. And like I said, I was going to put the GitHub link right here. It's, uh, if you want to take a picture of that, it's just github.com slash tmthyjames slash achu. And welcome to contribute, submit some pull requests. And like I said, this is a uh, not a technical talk, and it's not a long talk because this is a very simple um, idea behind this app. All I want to do is see if I can predict his inhaler usage. So with that being said, uh, I will open it up for questions.